talking to McKinney about how much they've improved since mm -hmm. the beginning of the year. How much better are they than they were in the Talking about Virginia time. Tech. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's, uh, it's, it's really kind of impressive to watch. Just, the, you know, obviously we're studying their offense and, um, you know, finding their rhythm. Obviously, you know, they've settled on a few different quarterbacks. Their O-line, uh, you know, um, lineup has changed quite a bit, and you feel like they've kind of settled into something. Uh, there's there's maybe an injury issue at the right tackle spot. We'll see who starts there. But they've just kind of stuck with their plan and continue to get better at what they do. And uh, they're good offense. They present a lot of challenges for us that we're going to have to prepare all the way up until kickoff to be able to handle. Do they set it on one quarterback, or do they have situational? You know, they'll, they'll, it feels like they'll put number four in. Forgive me for not using names. I'm better with numbers. But number four is, is uh, he's a really tremendous runner. Two can run as well. Um, you know, but you feel four more in the red zone if they're going to change it up. But it feels like they're settling on two. And mm -hmm. you read a lot of things about how, you know, their record with two as a starter and those kind of things. But uh, four is a dangerous runner, and, and two is as well. But four feels more like a running back mm -hmm. that can throw, where two feels more like a quarterback that's able to run, if that kind of makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Coach to coach, mm -hmm. what do you respect about what Bud Foster has done in his career. Cool. I mean, as a defensive coach, he's someone that I think all of us have looked up to for years. I mean, I remember my first time here at Pitt, you know, before Virginia Tech left the Big East, and uh, that was one of the teams that we always studied. It felt like he was ahead of the curve. Um, his players have always played at a relentless uh, pace, a relentless tempo. Uh, they clearly play very hard for that man, and they love him in the lunch pail and all those things that have gone along with him. He's someone that our profession is really going to miss. In what way was he ahead of the curve? I just think schematically he was doing some really good things, you know, and, and a lot of times just the way he handled as the spread was kind of becoming more popular. I think some of the coverage schemes that he was doing was uh, maybe a little bit ahead of the country, so he'd look to what he was doing, a little bit like Coach Narduzzi. I mean, he was Coach Narduzzi, Coach Foster. Those are two trailblazers on the defensive side of the football and college football, and uh, just schematically he really did some impressive things, and his kids always play hard, so any issues that they may have had often gets erased just on sheer effort the way those guys play. Does his defense represent uh, resemble at all what you guys are doing here? Well, I think, you know, to a degree, I mean, they're doing some, some four. Do you talk schematically, Jerry? Yes, or are you schematic, talking? schematic. Yeah, I mean, there's they're certainly they're based out of a four down for the most part. They'll go into some three down stuff at times. But, um, you know, there's there's certainly some coverage structures that carry over. Uh, but there's, there's significant differences as well. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about Deslin's play in the last few weeks? And do you think yeah. he's getting a little overlooked in your group? You know, I mean, that's up to you guys, you know, who you, who you choose to write about. I mean, certainly Jalen's early press with the stats is going to get him a lot of deserved attention. Um, Pat Jones and some of the production he's had, but uh, I think it's fair to say Deslin deserves some attention. He's he's played really hard, really well. I think our room, you know, really root, you know, roots for each other to continue to improve and do well. And uh, he certainly came up big, you know, this past Thursday night. Um, but he's been just kind of one of those guys that gets – Talk about Coach Narduzzi's three percent better. He's he's a poster child for that, and you know he's going to have those moments where his opportunity shows up and he can make big plays. And I'm proud of him for that because he's never wavered just in terms of how he approaches his preparation and his game and his goal to improve. And that's you know you guys are now seeing that on game day uh, where his production is improving. He he really reminds me of where Pat was, uh, you know maybe a few months ago. So I'm excited for him. I know you guys are focused week to week, but what's mm -hmm. what's JT's like NFL potential when you when you look at that? Yeah, I mean, there, in my opinion, I don't think there's any doubt that he can play at that level. You know, he's certainly a redshirt sophomore. We all know it's his third year, and and you know those decisions we'll worry about after the season and guide him as necessary. But uh, I have no doubt that in time he can play in the NFL. I mean, he's. Uh, you know, he, I think he's the leading, you know, sack guy in the country for an interior D lineman. I think that's accurate. Um, but is that accurate, yes, EJ? Sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. I mean, it's it's his his relentless uh, uh, pursuit to get better. You know, he's he's wanting to improve some of his techniques in the run game, and he's been productive. Um, the sack speaks for themselves, and uh, he, he's. I've, I've been fortunate. I've been around a lot of guys that played the NFL, and he's every bit as good as those guys I've coached. And I think he's got a chance to play for a long time. Charlie, as the games go on, the magnitude mm -hmm. gets bigger. It's kind of yeah. this must win for the Coastal. What do you tell your guys about this, this shot on well, Saturday? You know, what I'm like. here come all the cliches, right? I mean, this is the next big game because it's because it's Virginia Tech, and that's who we have this week. But the reality is I'm not going to hide from the fact that you love that there's some stuff on the line in November. It's, that's what you want. That's what you play for. And um, 
We're excited to go into what's going to be, we all know is going to be a tremendous atmosphere. Bud Foster's last game in that stadium, their senior day, uh, everything that's potentially on the line. Uh, it's an exciting game, but you just, it really comes all back to their training. You know, it's, it's to the point where once that ball is kicked off, uh, you have to read your keys. I mean, you have to stay in your lane, so to speak, and literally and figuratively, and you just try and block all the white noise out and do your job. Is there a tightness that comes from playing in a hostile environment that you kind of, or you guys kind of enjoy being the, that team, that other team? Yeah, you I, I, I think it would change from guy to guy that you ask. I mean, I think younger guys tend to get a little more distracted by it. Uh, I think older guys revel in it and enjoy it and, and you know, kind of wrap your arms around the 72 guys that are traveling there as a small pack going into enemy territory, so to speak, and uh, you embrace that. I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I'm, I'm excited to hear Sandman and all that stuff that we know is traditions there, and I mean, that's what you want. Go into a great atmosphere with stuff on the line and put our best foot forward. I think it's got a chance to be a, a, a tremendous four-quarter game.